In this video, I'm going to try something a little bit different, and I'm going to go over five different categories of tools that I would encourage you to explore in 2025. The first one is an AI IDE. Now you've probably heard of a number of these. Now Cursor is arguably the most popular AI IDE that's out there. When AI IDE, what it allows you to do is to have a really ergonomic environment on how you can write code. What you can do, for instance, is within Cursor is you can begin to write out code like you typically would, but then you can just tab through and have autocomplete for different functions or different sections. And it's gotten to the point where it is really reliable. And what I really love with Cursor, as well as all of these AI IDEs, is they are a direct beneficiary whenever these large language models come out and have improvements. For instance, when Sonnet 3.5 came out, it was shortly thereafter that Cursor and a number of these AI IDEs really took off because now you're able to reliably create these agentic systems within an IDE. It will allow you to write code for you with natural language, but it can also do things like multi-file edit, and the features are really increasing day by day. I personally have a pro subscription and I'd encourage you to check it out. There's also a free trial that you can check out as well. Next up, another great option is Windsurf by Codium. This just came out in the fall and it is another really powerful option. One of the things that I found great with Windsurf is it has really good contextual awareness. What do I mean by that? Basically, if you're using the right-hand panel where you're interacting and asking questions about your code base or asking for changes or what have you, it will automatically attempt to find the particular files that you're referencing or the particular features that need to be updated. And oftentimes certain features might span across a number of different files. And it does a surprisingly good job at being able to traverse what can be sometimes often relatively complex code bases. I'd really encourage you to check this out. I tried this out a number of months ago when it first came out, and I just recently tried it out over the past weekend. And I was able to build out a full stack application that I'm open sourcing this week in just a number of hours. The other thing that's nice with this is there is also a free tier, but it is slightly cheaper than Cursor as well. And from my experience, there are some really great developers that actually even prefer the offering from Codium and Windsurf over Cursor, just something to consider. Now I'm gonna put links to the videos where I've covered both Cursor as well as Windsurf within the description of the video if you're interested in checking out any of this. Now next, another great option is GitHub Copilot. This is one of the first videos that I covered on the channel. And what GitHub Copilot allows you to do is very similar to the other tools. But what's interesting with GitHub Copilot is it has a deep, as you might expect, integration within GitHub itself. Now what you're gonna be able to do more and more is be able to have these AI features and increasingly be able to do more and more at the repository level in addition to being able to use it directly within your IDE as well. Now, the other great thing with Copilot is they recently released a pretty generous free tier. You'll be able to get a number of different premium requests per month through their free tier. So you'll be able to access models like GPT-4.0 as well as Sonnet 3.5 and have a number of free requests even to those premium models for free each month. So next, another great option is Continue. Continue is an open source alternative to what I showed you. And what's great with this is you can even pull down local models and try out all of these new AI models that come out. These small language models or SLMs as they're often referred to, you'll be able to use those within the context of something like Continue as well. And Continue pairs really well with a tool known as Olama where you can pull down local models and you can use those with Continue and have these models completely offline on your machine, you won't be incurring any costs at all. And these small language models are becoming increasingly powerful as well. Next, what I would encourage you to check out are some of these text -to app builders. Some of the popular ones from last year were Bolt.new, Lovable, as well as V0. And what these allow you to do is you can put in with natural language what you want your application to be, and it will effectively create it for you. So under the hood within a lot of these, they're using models like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, and it's essentially going through this sort of agentic pattern where it's set up in a way where it's very specific to app building, and it will allow you to create these apps that you can even go connect to Supabase and even deploy in most of the options that are out there now. Another really good option that I've encouraged you to check out is also lovable.dev. You can also try out all of these platforms for free as well. There is obviously a limit on the free tier, but if you just wanna try these out, I'd encourage you honestly to check out all of them. Now, another great one is also V0. 
So V0 is built by the team over at Vercel, and where this does particularly well is with things like Shad CNUI components. They do have the creator of Shad CNUI on staff, and honestly, they're some of the best full stack engineers, as well as front end engineers that are out there at Vercel. V0 does increasingly well at a number of different tasks, and it's also really easy to pull down these components and integrate them within your project as well. So next, and you're probably using one of these platforms already, whether it's ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, or Perplexity. Let's say you don't want to subscribe to any service. You'll be able to access a lot of these frontier models for free, at least for a number of requests. Now, all of these platforms do have pro features as well. ChatGPT, for instance, he has access to O1 and O1 Mini and soon to be O3 Mini within ChatGPT, which if you're looking for advanced reasoning capability, that could be a really good option for you. If you're doing a lot of coding specific tasks, a ton of people love the artifacts feature within Claude, which is a really great option being able to access 3.5 Sonnet. One that I've been enjoying using this month is Gemini Advanced 1.5 Pro with Deep Research where what it will do for you is it will give you a brief of the tasks that it aims to complete. And if you accept it, it will go through all of these links and it will give you this synthesized report at the end of it with annotations of all of the different sources that it pulled from in the report that it generated for you. So if you're doing research, that's a really great option. And additionally for a similar type of tool is Perplexity. This initially came out and was popularized by being able to access real-time information and perform that search capability where it could scour the internet for relevant information on what you were looking for. That's another great option. And within the platform here, you'll be able to access a number of the frontier models. So you can select whether you want to use GPT-4.0 or Sonnet 3.5 or what have you. Next, another one, and this one just came out in December, is in Google AI Studio, they have this really cool feature called Stream Real Time, where what you can do is you can stream whether it's your computer screen, or your camera or what have you, and you can ask questions for tutorials, for instance, let's say you're within a video editing software and you don't know how to use it. What you'll be able to do is you can talk in real time as if there's someone right beside you to be able to figure out whatever you might be doing. Just to demonstrate that here, I'll just show you what the audio sounds like. Speaker says that Google AI Studio has a new feature called Stream Real Time. This feature allows you to stream your computer screen or camera and ask questions. The speaker suggests that this could be useful if you are in a video editing software and need help. The speaker claims you can talk in real time and have someone help you as if they were there with you. You can have different windows open. You can imagine even using this within the context of using your IDE and using it like a pair programmer or what have you. It's really, really neat. And the great thing with this is it's actually completely free. That's something to consider as well. Next up is the sponsor for today's video, Zero to Mastery. I'd encourage you to check out some form of structured learning in 2025. Within Zero to Mastery, there are a ton of different courses on here from prompt engineering, AI engineering, AI for beginners. Within AI and machine learning, there are courses like the Complete Python Developer's Guide, the Prompt Engineering Guide. You can learn about TensorFlow, PyTorch. There are also a ton of applied courses as well. If you're actually looking to leverage some of these large language models in building out applications. There are courses on how to build out apps with OpenAI, AWS, Gemini, Langchain, and that's just to name a handful. There are an absolute ton of different courses on here. It's not necessarily just AI either. Maybe you're a Python developer and you want to learn about front end. There are courses within here on that. There are even courses about interview skills. So if you're trying to get a job within the field, there are a number within this. If you're interested in trying out Zero to Mastery, I'll put the link within the description below. Next, this sort of stems from what Sam Altman said in a recent blog post, where he believes that in 2025, we may see the first AI agents, quote unquote, join the workforce and materially change the output of companies. So AI agents are definitely a little bit of a buzzword right now. But what I'd encourage you to check out, especially these no-code offerings out there, N8N is a great open source option where effectively what a lot of these tools will allow you to do is based on a trigger, it will go through this workflow and oftentimes a reason about the different steps that it needs to go through. Within NAN, here's an example of where you onboard a new joiner and it goes through and it provisions the different accounts. But there are a number of really great tools out there, whether it's Lindy AI, which helps you automate different tasks. Vectorshift is another great option as well. DeFi is also another great open source option that I've covered on this channel before. And if you're looking for coding based solutions, one that I've actually gravitated towards that I quite like is the B agent framework. 
I find for especially beginners for building out AI agents, this is probably a really no nonsense framework, especially for TypeScript developers that allow you to create these agents in just a number of lines of code that are extremely powerful, quick, and easy to use. It does a lot of the heavy lifting under the hood of setting up tool calls, doing reflection, and all of that sort of agentic ability that you'd often consider when you hear the term AI agent. But if you're more familiar with AI agents, what they can do, how you can build them, I'd encourage you to check out Langgraph. This is probably the industry standard, in my opinion, for building out AI agents right now. There's both a Python as well as a TypeScript implementation of Langgraph. Not only are there a ton of companies that are integrating this today in production use cases, but this is probably the most malleable framework. There definitely is a learning curve to Langgraph, but Langgraph allows you to build out very specific, reliable, and very customizable AI agents.